high temperature stress or heat stress this is a kind of abiotic stress in plants and when the plants are exposed to high temperature then it leads to adverse effect on the growth and metabolism of plants so let's start what happens when the plants are exposed to heat stress so when the plants are exposed to a temperature which is above or below the optimum temperature then it leads to the stressful condition in plants it was found that many higher plants they are unable to survive extended exposure to temperature above 45 degrees centigrade so above 45 degrees centigrade is the temperature to which most of the plants are unable to survive many dehydrated tissues and the non growing tissues they are able to survive much higher temperature than the ones which are hydrated and green so dehydrated tissues include seeds and pollens which can survive the high temperature but the hydrated tissues the growing tissues they cannot survive so actively growing tissues rarely survive the high temperature above 45 degrees centigrade but dry seeds some dry seeds can endure 120 degrees centigrade temperature some pollen grains endure around 70 degrees centigrade temperature it was also found that only single cell eukaryotes have the ability to survive over 50 degrees centigrade multicellular eukaryotes cannot okay only prokaryotes can divide above 60 degrees centigrade normally no organism can divide above 60 degrees centigrade only prokaryotes do and only single cell eukaryotes do now the plants which can acclimate to high temperature they are known to be as thermotolerant plants about acclimation we have already discussed it means the resistance so the plants which can show resistance to high temperature are known as thermotolerant plants. effect of high temperature on plants so the main metabolic processes of the plants include photosynthesis and respiration they are the first ones which are inhibited at high temperature another important effect is the high temperature reduces the membrane stability cam plants can tolerate high temperature so many cam plants for example succulent higher plants such as opuntia they are able to adapt the high temperature and they can tolerate the high temperature of 60 to 65 degrees centigrade under the condition of intense solar radiation as well so what do these cam plants do to adapt these cam plants keep their stomata closed during the day so when the stomata are closed during the day they cannot show the transpiration process so the role of transpiration is to give the cooling effect to the plant so when the plant cannot show the transpiration process they cannot cool by transpiration but the plant has to cool down so to cool themselves they they dissipate the heat by re emission of long wave radiation and the loss of heat by conduction and convection clear so when the cells are subjected to a stressful condition the condition which is non lethal so under non lethal heat episode which is stressful to the plant in that condition hsp synthesis increases dramatically synthesis of hsp is will be increased in a large rate okay but the translation of other proteins are lower down of this okay in nature this high temperature stress is usually associated with water stress and both of them causes photo inhibition now we have seen in water stress that uh, when there is water stress several metabolic processes are stopped okay in the high temperature also we see that several metabolic processes are stopped high, in the high temperature condition also the water evaporates at a much higher rate which also lead, uh, leads to water deficit so there is a similarity there is a similarity in the effect of both high temperature and water stress is that both causes photo inhibition so heat shock factor it cycles 
and activates the synthesis of each of protein and RNA. So now adaptation uh, to heat stress is mediated by cytosolic digestion. So it was found that in response to heat stress, the cytosolic calcium is increased. Okay, when cytosolic calcium is increased, it binds to calmodulin. And this activated calmodulin, they bind to an enzyme known as GAD. The full form of GAD is glutamate decarboxylase. Now this glutamate decarboxylase requires H plus for its function. So where does H plus come from? So this calcium, this calcium is exchanged with H plus in the vacuole. So from the vacuole when calcium goes in, H plus comes out. Okay, so this H plus is used for the activity of GAD enzyme. Okay, so here you see calcium can also come out from the vacuoles via calcium efflux channel, and this calcium can also be exchanged with H plus in the vacuole by CAX1 and CAX2, which are the transport proteins. So, uh, for the activity of the enzyme, calmodulin is required. For the activity of the enzyme, H plus is also required. Okay, so this glutamate and H plus when they combine, they form GABA with the help of the enzyme glutamate decarboxylase. So once this GABA is formed, it helps in the stress tolerance. Okay, so under heat stress, large amount of GABA are synthesized. Okay, large amount of GABA are synthesized. So this GABA are when synthesized, they help in the stress tolerance. Okay, and these GABA are synthesized from glutamate by the enzyme GAD and the activity of the enzyme. So to be, uh, for the enzyme to become active, they require calcium activated calmodulin. So at high temperature, photosynthesis is inhibited before respiration. So it was said that when the temperature increases, photosynthesis is the main process and the first process that will be inhibited. So when the temperature is above the compensation point. So what is compensation point? The temperature at which the amount of CO2 fixed by photosynthesis, so fixed and release becomes equal. So the amount of CO2 fixed by photosynthesis is equal to the amount of CO2 released by respiration. Okay, so one molecule of CO2 released, it will be immediately fixed. Then one molecule of CO2 released, it will be immediately fixed. Then when, once it is fixed, it will be broken down. So there is no net gain, there will be no reserve for it. Okay, photosynthesis and respiration rate are almost equal in compensation point. So at the temperature above compensation point, it was found that up when the compensation point will be above, then what we see that the respiration rate is very very high. So in this condition, when the temperature is above compensation point, then the respiration rate is very very high. Then you can say that when the respiration rate is very high, that means the breakdown is fast. If the breakdown of food is very fast. But we know that photosynthesis rate was decreased at high temperature. So photosynthesis rate was decreased. And respiration rate was increased. So what we can conclude from here, so at high temperature, Photosynthesis rate was decreased, but respiration rate was decreased, increased. 
so it what we can conclude that the plant cannot show uh, the plant cannot make any reserved food so with this fast breaking of food the respiration in respiration what we see that the carbohydrate reserves also decline because they are not getting the adequate supply for the breaking down of the food okay they are not getting the adequate supply of carbohydrate so they are breaking the food reserves also to get the energy okay at high temperature when plant cannot synthesize the food so fast but the breakdown of food is very fast so to get the energy in the condition of high temperature they also use the carbohydrate reserve okay so when the carbohydrate reserves decline the fruits and vegetables lose their sweetness okay there will be very less amount of carbohydrate that will be transported to the fruit and whatever is there in the fruit it will be used up at high temperature so this imbalance between the photosynthesis and respiration is one of the main reason for the deleterious effect of high temperature now enhanced res respiration are more detrimental in c3 plants so c3 plants are able to show photorespiration also now high amount of energy are required in photorespiration okay so at high temperature c3 plants shows photorespiration but c4 and cam plants do not show photorespiration due to a different mechanism due to a different mechanism of synthesis of food okay so it was seen that enhanced respiration are more detrimental in c3 plants than in c4 plants because the rate of both dark respiration and photorespiration are increased in c3 plants at higher temperature now dark respiration is what dark respiration is a normal process of synthesis of food in which use the enzyme rubisco but photorespiration also uses rubisco and photorespiration uses the oxygenase activity of rubisco but dark respiration uses the carboxylase activity of this okay this we will do in photo respiration uh, sorry photosynthesis and photo respiration chapter clear so this high temperature is more detrimental for c3 plants okay for c3 plants high temperature is more detrimental okay because at high temperature the oxygenase activity of the rubisco is activated and they shows photorespiration also this photorespiration require large amount of energy okay which can at times uh, drain the energy in plants now high temperature reduces the membrane stability so what we see that when the whenever the temperature is high the membrane composition and structure are modified they cause the leakage of ions from the membrane the fluidity of the membrane increases and there is a decrease in the strength of hydrogen bonds and electrostatic interactions between the polar groups of proteins so membrane disruption causes the inhibition of process such as photosynthesis respiration which all depend on the membrane associated electron carriers and enzymes so membranes have the carriers and the enzymes for photosynthesis and respiration and when the membrane is disrupted then these two metabolic process will be disrupted also here in the and membrane fluidity also increases the leakage of ions also occurs and the interaction between the uh, proteins and the membranes is also disrupted it was also seen that the chloroplast enzymes began to denature and lose activity so we this is very 
common uh, basic knowledge that at high temperature the proteins denature so chloroplast enzymes began to denature and lose their activity which directly inhibits photosynthesis which will inhibit photosynthesis so these results suggest that in the early stages of heat injury to photosynthesis are more directly related to changes in membrane properties so first what we saw that early changes in high temperature is the change in membrane property is the changes in membrane property and to uncoupling of the energy transfer mechanism and uncoupling of energy transfer mechanism and in the later stages what we see that there is a denaturation of So damage part will be in the later stage of exposure to high temperature. Now mechanism for tolerance and acclimation to the high temperature. So how do the plant tolerate this high temperature? They have to tolerate otherwise it will lead to the death of the plant. So in response to high temperature plants synthesize a specific kind of protein named as heat shock protein or in short HSPs. Okay, so these HSPs are produced by the accumulation of GABA. So the full form of GABA is GABA is a non-protein amino acid. Gamma amino butyric acid. The full form is gamma amino butyric acid. So upon accumulation of GABA, the plant produces heat shock proteins. It also shows closure of stomata in response to high temperature and expression of some antioxidant enzymes also in response to high temperature. So these are common to water deficit also. So in response to certain 5 to 10 degree centigrade rise in temperature, it was seen that plants synthesize a unique set of proteins named as heat shock proteins. Okay. So these heat stress proteins, they, what do they do? They causes many cell proteins to become folded back. So due to heat stress, it was found that the proteins become unfolded or misfolded. So when the protein were unfolded and misfolded, it leads to the loss of proper enzyme structure and activity. So these misfolded proteins, they often aggregate and precipitate and they lose their function and creates a serious problem within the cell. So here comes the role of HSPs. What these HSPs does they act as a molecular chaperones. Now what are chaperones? Chaperone, chaperones are the ones which are the helpers. They serve to attain a proper folding of misfolded aggregated proteins and they prevent misfolding of proteins. So they have two roles. The chaperones have two roles. The first role is proper folding of the misfolded ones. The ones which have already misfolded will make them proper, properly folded. And secondly, the ones which are properly folded, they prevent their misfolding. So proper folding of misfolded ones and prevent misfolding. Okay, so these misfolded ones, they often aggregate and precipitate and or the serious problem in the cells. So these HSPs are synthesized in response to heat stress and have the role in proper folding of misfolded proteins and they prevent further the misfolding of proteins.
the VHSP helps the plant to sell uh, to uh, show the proper functioning at even at the high temperature. So within very few hours, within few hours of return to the normal temperature, HSPs are no longer produced. So when the normal temperature is returned back and the stress is removed, it was seen that HSPs are no longer produced. And the pattern of protein synthesis which the plants were showing before, they returns to normal. Okay, so the synthesis of HSP in response to any uh, stress is very rapid. So in response to heat stress, the synthesis of HSP are very rapid. Okay, then after 3 to 5 minutes after stress. And the bulk of them are synthesized within 30 minutes. Synthesis starts after uh, 3 to 5 minutes and bulk are synthesized within 30 minutes. Okay. So there are some HSPs which are found in normal unstressed cells also. They are found all the time in the normal and unstressed cells also. It is not obvious, it is not necessary that HSPs are synthesized only during the heat stress. So there are some HSPs which are found in the normal and unstressed cells also. And there, again there are some cellular, essential cellular proteins that are homologous to HSPs which are not increasing response to thermal stress. So we studied few kinds of HSPs. Some HSPs are synthesized in response to heat stress. I write this. So HSPs, there are several kinds. Some are synthesized in response to heat stress. Some are present in the unstressed cells. And some HSPs are analogous to HSPs. Some proteins, sorry, it's not HSP. Some proteins are analogous to HSPs. But they are not increased in response to heat stress. So some, pro some HSPs are increased in response to heat stress. Some are e present in the unstressed cells also. And some are analogous proteins, some, are some cellular proteins are there which are analogous to HSPs and they are not increased in response to heat stress. Okay, so it does not state that, so it states that the HSPs are not the ones that only increase in heat stress. Okay, there can be several circumstances under which the HSPs are increased. So they are found throughout the cytoplasm as well as in mainly chloroplast and So it was, there are several members of HSP. HSP 60, 70, 90 and 100, they act as molecular chaperons. We already discussed what molecular chaperons are. Involving ATP dependent stabilization, they stabilize the proteins and they helps in folding of proteins and they helps in assembly of oligomeric proteins. So HSP 60, 70, 90 and 100, they act as molecular chaperones. Next HSP comes, it is HSP-90, specific role of specific, uh, HSP-90 that they are associated with hormone receptors in animal cells and they, they have a very less role in plant cells or there is no comparable information for plants about HSP-90. Now there are some HSPs which assist in polypeptide transport across the membranes into cellular some HSPs are molecular chaperones, some HSPs work as a polypeptide transport also. The transport of polypeptide from, uh, sorry, across the membranes into compartments. Now low molecular weight HSPs, they are abundant in higher plants. Okay, low molecular weight are abundant in higher plants and some of HSPs 
are not unique to high temperature stress. For example, they are induced by widely different environmental stress. For example, our ABA treatment also causes the HSPs to accumulate. Water deficit also accumulate HSP wounding, low temperature stress and salinity there can also help in the synthesis of HSP. It is not limited to the heat stress only. So HSP 70 has a high degree of structural similarity and has about 70% identical in both plants and animals. Okay, another protein named as ubiquitin, it is found in all eukaryotic organisms. They are subjected, uh, sorry, found in all eukaryotic organisms which are subjected to heat stress and this ubiquitin is also considered as a kind of HSP. Now, HSP-70, they appear to function as a molecular chaperone we discussed or known as chaperoning. They prevent the disassembly and denaturation of multimeric aggregates during the heat stress. So, this is the role of chaperoning. We already read this. Now, about HSP-60, that there is in the chloroplast, for example, a rubisco binding protein which is known as HSP, which helps to assemble the large and small subunits of rubisco into a functional unit. So this is under the normal condition, not under the stress condition. Okay, so under the normal condition, there is a HSP-60, which helps to assemble the large and small subunits of the rubisco functional enzyme. The rubisco functional enzyme has a large and sub small subunit, and this large and small subunit, are attached as a functional enzyme by HSP-60. Which makes a rubisco enzyme. So heat shock factor HSF cycle or HSF cycle it activates the synthesis of HSP mRNA. So HSF is activating HSP mRNA. So what we see that HSF is activating the HSP mRNA. So in the non-stressed cells HSF normally exists in a monomeric stage. In the monomeric stage, they are bound with HSF or bound with HSP-70. So this is a monomeric stage where the HSF are associated with HSP-70. Okay. Upon the onset of the heat stress, it was found that the HSP-70 dissociates from HSF. So there is a dissociation of HSP-70 which leads to the primerization of HSF. Then what we see in the third condition that active trimers, so these trimers are the active form of HSF. So these active trimers then goes and binds on the HSP. So see you can see here the blue color ones, heat shock element, HSE. And this DNA is a HSP DNA. Okay, so they these trimer bound bind on the HSE region, which is present on the promoter of the HSP protein. So once they bind here, so binding on HSE. Okay. Once they are bound to HSP, what happens? They activate the transcription of HSP mRNA. So transcription and translation of HSP mRNA leading to the formation of HSP protein. So the HSP protein that will be synthesized here is HSP 70. Clear? So this is one part here. Another what we see in number 5 is that the HSP trimers associated with HSE are 
was correlated. So this is transcription and translation and this is phosphorylation. Clear? Now what we see, now this phosphorylation step facilitates the binding of HSF with HSP70. Again, this shows the binding of HSP70 with HSF. Clear? Now in number 6 what we see that this facilitating the binding of HSP70. So what happens first is the phosphorylation. Second is the binding. Now in 7 what we see that the HSP70 trimer complex which is this. This trimer complex this one. Trimer complex this dissociates from HSE. So HSE got separated. This is dissociated from HSE and it disassembles. It disassembles and dephosphorylates. So here is a disassembly. They dephosphorylate. Okay. And dephosphorylation. So disassembly and dephosphorylation which is leading to the formation of monomers again. Okay. So this is how the HSS cycle is helping in the synthesis of HSP70. Okay. Now adaptation to heat stress is mediated by cytosolic calcium. 